of it. Okay, so let's look at brushes. Now, some people might be confused about the nomenclature of what is a brush in cocktail, uh, because if you are familiar with, you know, painting or maybe using some other software, you might think of brushes as something you draw with, you know, like you would paint something with a brush. But in the case of cocktail, um, brushes are actually a property, well, they're, they're potential values of different properties of the layers. And so what you're going to see here, if I go to select, let's see this rectangle one. Okay. Go to rectangle one, and I've got a few properties here that are actually brushes. There's fill, stroke, and opacity mask. Each of those is actually a brush. So if I expand fill, I can see here this brush type at the very top is a solid color brush. There are multiple options within here. Linear gradient, radio gradient, image, SVG, and visual. Besides solid color, those are all other types of brushes that we could use. Now, solid color brush uses this color picker. And you can see it's an HSV based color picker. So you've got your hue, your saturation, and your value, and those are then converted into RGB values. You also have alpha. Okay. Below here we've got save colors, and so we can see this cur current color here is this purple color. If I wanted to, I cr can press plus. Now this purple color becomes part of my saved colors, and the next time I open the application, that purple color is going to be in there. Okay. Uh, I also have recent colors, so every time I change the color to something else, the recent colors is updated, so you see whatever is mostly recently used. If I'm dragging this around to like some different areas or whatever, and I can see the color that's turning into by looking down here, right? It adds the color as soon as I stop moving. Also, below that we have color harmony. So if I go back to this purple color, let's say, I go back to this purple, I can see the color harmony. See, there's my purple color, right? And next to it is this green color. And there's my purple color again. There's green and there's a blue, and then there's a yellow green and a blue, and like different colors that go with one another based off of this purple that I've selected here. Now if I click on green, now that becomes my color and all of a sudden the color harmonies are updated. Okay. However, if I want to go back to the purple, or if I want to stick with purple, I can cl click this lock button here. You see how this lock opens and closes when I click on it? When it's closed, clicking on the other colors does not update the color harmonies. So I just stick with my original color harmonies. That way uh, I can choose, you know, kind of different colors that go together uh, without it updating every single time. So that's just something that's cool. All right, so I'm going to switch back to this purple. And now I'm going to show you guys uh, some of the other brushes. So I'm going to switch to linear gradient. Okay, so if I go to linear gradient, now my colors disappeared here, right? Well, that's because linear gradient brush is yet to be defined. So the linear gradient brush consists of gradient stops. So a gradient stop is basically a color at a position, right? Along a path along a straight line, okay? And so in order to edit the colors, you click this little three dot button here, right? So we click this, and it comes up with this little collection editor, right? Which is basically a generic dialogue that I came up with to edit any 
list of things. Okay, and here it has the type that we're going to add. It's got cocktail model, brush model, ingredient stop. Okay, I'm going to press plus here to add two. So I press plus twice. If I want to, I can remove the gradient stops you know, by pressing minus. So I go to gradient stop zero and I'm going to click on my saved color here, this purple that I saved previously. Click on that. That gets me back to my purple. I'm going to lock the color harmonies and then I'm going to select I don't want to select the green because the green is too much like the color of the background. So I'm going to pick orange. A sort of orangish color here. Um, well, I guess I could have done this differently. Uh, let me go back to purple. Alright, so I'm going to say at stop zero. This is at position zero. And this number is a value between basically between zero and one. It could be below zero and it could be above one. But to keep things simple, let's say the range is 0 to 1. Okay, So at, at uh, stop 0, I'm going to have this purple. Now I'm going to go to gradient stop 1. Okay, And at gradient stop 1, right, I'm going to say the value of my stop is 1. That's my position, basically. And my color, again, I'm going to go back to my purple and I'm going to select that orange color is orange. And so now you can see here what's happened. We've got this nice gradient from purple in this top corner to orange. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and close this dialog. Right? Um I can add, by the way, more than two items in here as well. So I could have a gradient stop three and give it a value of 0.5 or something like that so we could blend between three different colors. Now let me just show you that really quick. You know, why not? So let's say we wanted to actually do that. And I'm going to add a new gradient stop and I'm going to have this called gradient stop 2. And I'm going to make the stop 0.5. Yep. So now you see there's this black in there because it's currently at black. And I'm going to go to my purple color, and I'm going to select this um, blue, because we're in this tetradic one, right? So this is a group of colors that I'm using. So I'm going to go into blue. So you can see now, it actually went from purple to blue to orange. So you can do some really nice visuals just using this um, sort of linear gradient functionality of brushes. Right. Now, I'm going to go uh, a little bit further with this because right now the color is going from the top corner here, top left corner, to the bottom right corner here. And it's difficult to see here but it is actually at an angle, right? There's a there is an angle here because because the because it's wider than it is long, it it doesn't you can't necessarily see the angle of it. If I make this a little bit shorter, for instance, you can see more clearly that the blue that all the colors are banded in kind of a at, at an angle, a ninety degree angle, basically, right? Undo that. I went back too far. Hmm. Somehow I did something. Uh, I must have I must have done something after I undid it. Okay, let me go back to this. Uh, okay. Anyway, that's how uh, the linear gradient works. Yeah, actually here it is. 
All right, so that's how the linear gradient works. And so you can see here, um, actually, it is at an angle. And you can see it here in this little preview of the fill as well. The fill preview here doesn't work well for all of the um, brushes, like the, the visual brush and the, the image brush, etc. don't necessarily give you a good um, preview here, but here you can see the angle of this. Um, that's, that has to do with this start xy and end xy. The start xy, 0, 0 is this top left corner, and 1, 1 is this bottom right corner. Right, and so that's why it's going at a like a ninety, not exactly a ninety degree angle because the width of the uh, box, the width of the rectangle is actually you know greater than the height, so it's not you know at a ninety degree angle, but it's going from the top left to the bottom right, this angle here, right? Um, so what we can do though is we can make it go either top to bottom by basically making it go from 0, 0 to 0, 1, right? Oops. 0, 1. So you can see here, now it's going from the top to the bottom. Or we could have it going um, from 0, 0 to 1, zero and that would be it doesn't look that much different um, because of the angle of the box but it basically goes from left to right with the, this gradient okay all right so that's the linear gradient and we can also do a radial gradient which is very similar except instead of going in a you know, straight line. It goes from a center point outward. And we can show that easily here just by adding a couple of gradient stops. We'll make it basically the exact same thing. Let's see. Like this. And it's it's got purple in the center. And as you get out closer to the edge, it goes to this orange color. Yeah. And you might even see it a little bit better if we make the gradient stop a smaller number, like a 0.8 or 0.7. Now you can see very purple in the middle, and as it goes out, at some point, 70% outward, it goes to orange, and it stays orange, essentially. Yeah. And you can do something with maybe some brighter colors like this. You can see it more prominently, right? And the larger this number is, of course, the longer it takes to get out to the edges. So you have more purple. The purple fills out a little bit more and it goes to this, this green color here, right? Um, right? Something like this. Okay, so that's Linear gradient and radial gradient are, are pretty similar, except the shape is different. Okay. And then you can set the radius, you can set the origin point, um, etc. So you can change kind of the where the center point is, and like how big in total the, the, gra the gradient is compared to the size of the, the thing that's filling. Yeah. All right, now let's get into something else. Let's, let's use an image as a brush. So in this case, let me go into demo two. I thought I had an art folder in here. You know what, I guess I didn't. Let me go back to cocktail demos. I've got an art folder here. I'm going to copy this art folder, go into demo 2 and paste. I'm just making a copy of this artwork that I'm going to use. Okay. 
All right, so I'm gonna, I just take something like this and you can see, you know, it's basically showing you the image. There's no stretch and there's no tile at all, right? Well, if I were to pull this out, you'd see basically the what this image is, right? But let's say I wanted it to stretch, all right? Um, I'm gonna, instead of doing, using this, uh, these settings, I'm going to set the stretch setting to fill. Oh, and I'm turning tiling off. So no tiling and it's stretching to fill. Now you can kind of see what's going on here, right? Because the image is stretching to fill the rectangle. Huh? Yeah. And there are other options. So there's, there's fill, there's uniform, which basically keeps the same aspect ratio, but then the image itself doesn't necessarily fill out the entire container in this case, right? The entire rectangle doesn't get filled. Or you can use uniform to fill, which basically means it fills the widest area that it can and allows itself to be cut off, right? That actually kind of works in this situation if we really want to use this as a background for this. Um, and that's, that's it for those. Now, unfortunately for this image, tiling is not going to work because the image itself is too large to tile. Um, so if you wanted to have like a tileable image, you would have to be smaller than the area that you wanted to put it in. Yeah. So that's, that's what this is. That's how that works. Uh, and I'll show you tiling in a second using the SVG brush. And it'll be similar basically for the, for the image brush as well. If you've got small images that are meant to be tiled together. Yeah. All right, and then the next thing is the SVG. So, and the SVG brush uses an SVG drawing, so something that you would uh, export from Illustrator or you would save from Inkscape or something like that. You can do an SVG format, and SVG format is a vector format. Uh, and the thing about a vector format is you don't lose quality when you resize it. Okay, so that's something that's very useful um, for using things like icons and stuff like that. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and select, even though it's not gonna make that much sense in this particular situation, I'm gonna go ahead and, well, these don't have any previews in them, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and use, I'm just gonna take this one called Wolf, wolf Head, right? And this one, you can see, um, it actually does, because initially the stretch is set to none and the tile mode is set to tile, right? You can see how it's attempting to tile the image, right? So it's filling up this, this rectangle with the image and it's tiling it. Now, and the image, uh, brushes does the same same exact thing if it's tileable. Um, so what you can do here is uh, you can also there's some other tile options here. There's flip X, flip Y, and flip X Y. So you can do things like this where every other one it's flipped in the other direction, right? When you tile it, um, then there's flip Y, which basically flips every other row. And then there's flip XY, which flips both the X and the Y for every other column and row. So you can do some pretty cool stuff with this, right? All right. Now, 
the last one is visual. And in order to show the visual brush, I'm going to have to create another visual. And so the way, what I'm going to do for this is I am going to, um, let's go back. Let's put this back where we were. Okay, I could undo this, whatever, but, um, and let's just go back to our solid color fill. It's fine. I'm going to bring in an image. So, for instance, let's use the image tool over here. I'm going to click and drag the image out. I'm going to select my source image. Uh, and I'm just going to pick something here. Let's pick one of these guys. Okay. I'm going to use uniform to fill. You see how when I use uniform to fill, obviously he's going outside of the area that I want because he's not centered. It's going from the top right. Uh, I'm going to change that and I'm going to go into, for images, they have horizontal and vertical alignment of the actual frame for the image, but they also have horizontal content alignment and vertical content alignment. Okay, and what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to center both of those. Yeah. So now the image itself is centered within my frame. Okay. And the other thing I'm going to do here, um, just to show how it works, is I'm going to go ahead and direct map link this to image, which is also in my spreadsheet. Okay. And when I go into Google Sheets here, you'll see each of these guys, I don't think all of these have an image set, but each of these guys basically sets it to a different image. Right. Okay, now, I want to do something kind of interesting with this. So I'm going to go back to my layout. And what I'm going to do is I am going to take a look at this layer. I'm actually going to kind of put it in just the right place that I want in the right size and let's make this three okay and I'm gonna add another layer to this and this layer I could actually do this in a couple different ways but here's this is my one of my first attempt of doing this is gonna be right and I haven't done anything with this right now but Let's just say we wanted to use some kind of shape, right? Um, let's pick a star, all right? Now we got a five point star. Um, we got a stroke and we got a fill on here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna take this star and I'm gonna stretch it out to be the size of my image. Actually, I'm going to copy. I don't know how this is going to work. We might have to do some adjustment here. Uh, I know there's a good way of doing this. That this is, I'm not doing this exactly the way that I've done it before. Image and star 2.2. So I'm just going to try this and see how it works. And three. So I'm, I'm trying to line these up exactly, you know, as they're supposed to be lined up. Okay. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to take the fill for my star and I'm going to set it to a visual brush. Okay. And in the visual, I can select what I want to fill it with. 
I'm going to fill it with image zero. No. Okay. So it's a little bit off, which I kind of expected, but there are ways of lining these up properly. Um, because the image itself is offset from like the top left, it's basically taking the position of this and aligning it to the star. So really the star and the character should be aligned to the top left, but there are ways to get around that using groups. But I'm just going to show this really briefly. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn off the guy in the background, right? And now we've got this star that's filled with the image of the character. And this can be anything. It can be a rectangle, it could be a triangle, it could be a hexagon, it could be a lot of different things. But this is something where you could do something pretty cool. And because there are groups, right, you could have a whole bunch of other stuff in here, right? It doesn't have to be an image. There could be text with it, it could be a lot of other stuff with it. It could be shapes, other stars, etc. Whatever you want, you can assign it to this visual okay all right so now if i go into the our preview again ah okay now i can see obviously it didn't turn off that background image the way that it was supposed to so i'm going to go back here and the reason why it doesn't do that is because this visibility doesn't affect the output this is just in the tool, okay? To affect visibility in the output, you have to use the enabled flag. So if I turn this off, right, for image zero, and then I go back to Google Sheets zero, now you can see that it's turned off, right? And the ones that have an image set have it filling up my star shape. Now you could just take the star, you get the same effect essentially by taking the star and applying a fill which is just the image itself instead of you know taking the visual from something we've already placed. So this is not all that interesting but you can do other stuff with it. So let's say we have a group. I'm going to I'm going to create a group, and this group is going to be at 0, 0, okay. and it's going to be 2.6 by 3.6, okay, so it fills up the whole card, right? And inside this group, first of all, I'm going to go into the star here, and I'm going to change this fill. I'm just going to make it solid color for a second. Not that that's necessary, but I haven't tested out like moving a lot of stuff around when there's things that are referencing one another. I mean, we could potentially, if we had one thing that was referencing another thing that was referencing back to the other thing, we have circular references, which is something I'm going to have to take a look at in the future. But for the most part, you know, the basic functionality of this is it's new, but it basically works. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this image zero. I'm going to drag it into group, right? And the reason why this is important is because this group zero is now from the very top left, okay? And it is, now we can, instead of using image zero, right? We can apply group zero to star, right? And the image itself could have, well, let's put the name in there. Let's just go crazy, you know, like we've got rectangle one in here. We've got the text for the name in here. And we'll reorder these. Down here, this up and down arrows are for ordering the layers. So you can move stuff around in layers or you can drag them however you like to do, right? 
And I'm just going to take this, and actually you could group these two together too. You could group the text and rectangle together. That would be probably smart. Um, what you can do though, is I'm going to go ahead and select these. And you, even though they're grouped, you can still select them. Um, and you can move them individually, right? Uh, you can also take the whole group and move it around as well, right? Let me add this back in here and this group. Let's just go back to zero, zero. All right. So anyway, I'm going to take this text. I'm going to move it inside here. And I'm going to take this rectangle and I'm going to move it inside here. Right? Nothing like this. And now if I set star zeros fill to a visual brush and I select group zero, you can see how it works. Right? And I turn off. Actually, instead of turning this off, I'm going to turn off the whole group and I'm going to disable the group. Oh. Now these might be a little bit off, but I think if I align the star, I think because the star and the group are, on, are misaligned, that's what causes a problem. So Zero, zero, 2.6 and 3.6. Now I'm actually running out of time here, but uh, I just wanted to kind of show this off. So we've got star and we've got group, and star is referencing group. Not sure why this doesn't re refresh. Okay. Now that's in there. Did I make a mistake? Let's go back to layout two. Okay, this is here. The group itself, okay, is disabled. Uh huh. The stars. Here, it's enabled. I've got all of these. Oh, I think the image is disabled. You only want to disable the group that's linked to the star in this case, okay? If I go here, oh, I think this is working. If I turn this off, you can see kind of lined up. It doesn't work. It's not working exactly as I expected. It's, for some reason, there's still a little bit something that's off, which I'll have to look into. But essentially, you have what you have here, which is now the characters. It doesn't show up in the preview. I'll have to take a look at this. But the idea here is that you could have something where you could have a shape or you could have anything else that could be um, used as a kind of mask and you can either draw onto the mask or you could use the object itself as a mask. We could do it the other way, right? Where star zero is the thing that's, actually star zero would be the thing that is disabled and it's got a fill of a solid color and that solid color is white or whatever it is, doesn't matter. Um, and then the group is turned on and it's enabled and it has an opacity mask, which is a visual, which is a star. Okay? Maybe that's a better example, right? Because that actually lines it up properly. And we go in here and we can see that, right? So all of the stuff that was within the group then is masked by the shape.
right? So that's something that's a new feature that is pretty cool. Okay.